Welcome back everyone to another retrospective video. I'm Shadow Spartan, and since there's a new season of The Mandalorian going on, I'm all about Star Wars right now. So today we're going to look back on a video game that takes place 8 years after Episode 6, while The Mandalorian is about 5 years, so pretty close. This is Star Wars Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast, published by LucasArts, and was developed by Raven Software, who've worked with Infinity Ward on Call of Duty Warzone, and worked with Treyarch on the recently released Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Unfortunately this game is considered non-canon, and more like an alternate universe within Star Wars. I would describe this game as a run and gun, hack and slash action game, with force powers. So far it still has a small fan base, mostly playing on this game's sequel, Jedi Academy. As usual, we're going to go through the story, so spoiler warning, what I liked and disliked, and any funny or awkward moments that happened to me during my playthrough. Let's force push our way into this. Oh yeah, the beginning title crawl. That never gets old. So even though there were three games before this one, the only important parts we need to know is our main character, Kyle Gatarn. He had defeated someone called Jarek at the Valley of the Jedi. After nearly falling to the dark side, he then severed his connection to the Force, and returned to being a mercenary for the New Republic with his partner Jan Ors. They've been sent to investigate Imperial activity on a planet called Kejim. While en route, Mon Mothma gives Kyle and Jan a decoded message talking about the Valley of the Jedi and something about being reborn. So they continue on with their mission. And may the Force be with you. <laughs> so much for the blue milk run. They make it seem like you need to be stealthy, but this isn't that kind of game. You start off with a very simple weapon. Kyle's weapon lets you charge up the laser blast to deal more damage, and the most common weapon lets you spray. Now I started to notice accuracy is really bad in this game. It takes a while to get used to, but mine appeared to be aiming a little to the upper left of my reticle. There are secret spots in all levels. Despite playing this game so much when I was younger, I still don't know all the spots. So Kyle and Jan make their way in, solving a couple puzzles, and probably killed a whole platoon of stormtroopers who, unlike in the movies, have better aim. What is great about this game is this is all a setup to show you how cool and overpowered being a Jedi will be later on. For now, you can barely jump, you have to use weapons that take multiple hits to take out enemies. It's a fun and difficult challenge. You need to always be moving to dodge laser fire. Otherwise, you'll need to find health or shield boosters. You can easily run out of ammo and have to resort to using this claw thing. So make sure you're being accurate, headshots do deal more damage and usually one-shot enemies. You also get thermal detonators. Left mouse lets you throw it out and it will explode after a couple seconds. Right click will explode on impact. So this mission concludes with Jan telling Kyle to grab some of the crystals to take back. But Kyle is being watched by Admiral Gallic Fire. Lord Dasan, this is Admiral Fire. Ah, uh, Admiral Fire, how go our experiments? But Gallic gives him bad news about mercenaries raided their base. He believes it was the pilot Jan Ors and Kyle Gatarn. Gatarn, eh? Hmm. This setback could prove to be the answer to all our problems. Kyle and Jan return to Mothma. And she explains the New Republic believed the Imperials in that base were trying to artificially infuse the Force into living subjects. It's unknown if that's even possible to simply give someone the Force with a machine, but the prisoners on Kedjin were colonists from a mining world called Artis Prime, so Mothma would like to send Kyle and Jan to... So you'd like us to sneak in, assess the situation, and call on the fleet if necessary? Yes. You know I don't like messing with this Force business anymore. We'll double your usual fee. We'll take it. All right, I'm clear. This meteor storm gives us great cover. Everything's closed up. They'll never see us coming. I better try not to attract too much attention. Once again, they make this seem like a stealth mission, but this might be the closest to trying to play stealth. Don't get spotted by the lights or Imperial drones come out to attack you. If you run in here and turn them off, this concludes the stealth section. Everything else is once again running and gunning. There are these buttons, which are hard to notice if it's part of the wall or if it's a button. I wouldn't be surprised if a first time player, they get stuck running around the map not knowing they just had to hit a simple button to unlock a door. Pretty subtle, but it 
that seems to have gotten the job done. There are these creepy little monsters that bite you, but just keep running. And don't worry about hearing them chasing you. Oh crap, never mind, die you little monsters! Also, you get the Wookiee Bowcaster, which is very different from Chewie's weapon. Eh, close enough. Hold the left mouse to charge it up and it will spray five in a cone. Right click to have it bounce around. You also get these mines that create a line which will blow up if someone runs through them. Or right click and it will explode if an enemy gets too close. This mine you can blow up whenever you right click. Also, some enemies didn't seem to hear me come in and take out their comrades. So Kyle blows up the mining operations section of the base, then takes a tram to another section to release the prisoners. He takes an Imperial officer and escorts him to do so, then gets outside to fight against some ATSTs, takes out the anti-air boob guns. Prepare to fire giant boob nipple gun. The prisoners get rescued, so Jan says she'll land nearby to pick Kyle up. But then, Jan gets taken prisoner by Dasan and his apprentice. Well done, Tavion. Secure her in the cargo hold and prepare her for processing. Blast them, Kyle! Kyle? Kyle Katarn? You're the legendary hero who destroyed Jerek at the Valley of the Jedi. You look like nothing more than a bantha herder. Oh. Well, you look like an overgrown Kowakian monkey lizard, so I guess looks don't count for much. Hand her over. You desire this woman? Come, take her. Ah, oh, sit spit. Oh, sh. Nothing you do works on him. He blocks every laser blast. He will force push all projectiles back at you. He can just randomly decide to use force lightning or choke on you. Save your strength. The sun grows bored and basically says how pathetic Kyle is without the power of the force. He then decides to tell Katavion to kill Jan. Kill her. Kyle goes to the Valley of the Jedi to get his Force powers back. However, his father tries to tell him to be careful with anger in his heart and the need for revenge, worried that this will push him over to the dark side. His powers don't immediately come back, but over time he will grow stronger. It will become familiar to you again in time. What will you do now? Find the sun, but first I need to get something I left behind. As he leaves, unfortunately, Dasan was tracking him. And now Dasan knows the location of the Valley of the Jedi. Your plan worked, Master Dasan. Yes, Tavion. The death of Katarn's woman has driven him mad and delivered the Valley of the Jedi into our hands. Contact Admiral Fyar and prepare the troops. Kyle goes to Yavin 4. You can explore the Jedi Academy, even this room which is where the Rebels were during the attack on the Death Star, which is pretty cool. You can also watch as Jedi are practicing their Force powers and lightsaber skills. However, there was this one slip-up. Just pretend you didn't hear that. So as a quick side note, back when Lucasfilm was bought by Disney, they announced a new sequel trilogy. I was really hoping for something like this, a Jedi Academy that's being run by Luke Skywalker, slowly training new Jedi. We could have had Rey, Finn, or Kylo Ren being new students here, then perhaps in the second movie one of them turns to the dark side. I know I'm getting off topic, but I really wish the people in charge of Star Wars actually took a look at the extended universe and tried to bring stuff like this to the new movies. Kyle, I've been expecting you. Skywalker? You've come for your lightsaber. Yeah. After all these years? Getting back to the game, Kyle goes to Luke where he talks about how Dasan used to be a student at the academy. There's quite a bit of story exposition here, but long story short, Dasan had a bad upbringing, so he didn't get along with anyone at the academy. He eventually killed a Jedi during one of their trainings and said he was too weak to be a Jedi. 
and so he fled and hadn't been heard from since. Until now. Yes. Kyle, I I'm sorry about Jan. Yeah. Well, just give me my lightsaber and I'll be out of your way. So you begin your retraining as a Jedi. You go through a couple of simple puzzles and obstacles to get familiar with your force powers. Once you get your lightsaber, Luke tells you about Dasan's whereabouts. He made some dealings with a gang leader on Nar Shaddaa named Rilo Baruch, so Kyle has something to start on. Luke talks about how surprised he is how quickly and easily he made it through the trials. You've been to the Valley of the Jedi. Yes. Luke tells Kyle he is worried with the anger over Jan's death. Kyle could fall to the dark side and use the Valley for evil purposes. Are you saying I can't be trusted? I'm saying that I want you to let go of your anger before it destroys you. So Kyle gives Luke the coordinates to the Valley of the Jedi, and they go on their separate ways. We now head to Nar Shaddaa, and Kyle lets you know what he's thinking. I don't want to start any trouble... yet. You can do a little bit of exploring, but not too much. Can I join you? Sorry. Kyle tries to get some information from a bartender that talks like Jar Jar Binks. Ah, Jedis. I had no ideas. What can I do for you, honored Jedis? He says he'll go get Relo for you. Never trust a bartender with bad grammar. Now Kyle has to kill everyone in the bar. This is kind of dark for a Jedi to be doing, but I guess you could argue Kyle is acting in self-defense. Alright, enough fooling around. Where's Relo? Please! Noble Jedis! Not in the faces! Relo's office is on higher levels. Follow the garbage collectors. So now you fight lots of baddies in the street. You feel powerful now that you have force powers and a lightsaber. It is a lot of fun taking out enemies with a single stroke of your lightsaber, while also using my force powers to make my enemies helpless. You can force pull or push to knock enemies down, or just force push them off the edge. I feel like Vader in that scene from Rogue One. The game still makes it a challenge with different kinds of enemies, such as snipers, which you can't block with your lightsaber, and grenade throwers, which blow up on impact. You do get a new weapon like the sniper, which zooms in, and when you charge it up, you can completely disintegrate a person. You spend a while running through the streets, going up elevators, jumping from building to building, overall it's pretty fun. You get inside and do some exploring. Whew, what is that smell? So you spend a lot of time exploring this garbage plant until you run into... al -Katar? Wow, that's actually Billy D. Williams voicing Lando from Empire Strikes Back. That's really cool. Anyway, he tells you Bespin has had some criminal trouble and came to talk to Relo but got captured. Kyle mentions the Imperial Remnant is involved, so Lando helps you by giving you the password to Relo's command center. Yeah, it's Ruby Bleals. I could go for one of those. Yeah, me too. I'll be right back. I'm not going anywhere. You meet up with Relo and he tells you that he's doing all this for money, then tries to kill you. You fight off some more bad guys and free Lando. Relo has disappeared, so you regroup with Lando and decide to go with him to his ship. What about Jan? Jan's not with me on this one. You two have had another one of your fights, haven't you? Well, come on, let's go. You can buy some flowers on Besman. There's a few things you have to do, but story-wise, it's not important. Ah, there's my baby. That doesn't sound good. I don't believe it. It's not my fault. It's not my fault! Until the very end, where you kill Relo with the ship's gun. So now you guys are on your way to Bespin. Alright, say goodbye to this wretched hive of scum and villainy. You will never find the more wretched hive of scum and villainy. And hello to Cloud City. Need any help? Just sit back and get some rest. I'll work out a plan to get the sand and his remnant friends out of my city. After Carl wakes up from his nap, Lando tells him the plan. 
But Kyle doesn't like it because that means Dasan will get away. He breaks the bad news to Lando, so Lando comes up with a new plan. Jan's dead, Lando. Dasan and his minion killed her. Grab, I'm sorry, Kyle. <sighs> okay, okay, here's what we'll do. Again, they make it sound like Kyle is going to be stealthy by starting on the lower levels of the city and make his way up. I'm beginning to wonder if they really wanted this to be a stealth game, but it just wasn't able to work. You always did plan for the worst. Ever since that run-in with Vader. Anyway, I'll head up top and gather some old friends from the security force. We'll work our way down towards your position. If we're lucky, we can trap Dasan before the New Republic arrives. Kyle gets dropped off, but don't stand here. So now that Kyle learned his lesson, he makes his way up. Gameplay hasn't changed much. Your force powers continue to level up, so check back on this menu to see what force powers leveled up. There are a couple of fun levels like this. You can just jump across, but don't touch the flashing lights. The best way is just to force speed your way through. There's this where you ride the air. Except, I don't know what happened here. When you get to the top... I sense a disturbance in the force, but there's something strange about it. You will die! This is the best and worst part of the game, the lightsaber fights. It's like fighting a mini-boss. Some of these reborn Dark Jedi are easy to fight, but they can also deal a lot of damage to you. So you need to time your attacks carefully. Strange. You looked like a Jedi and fought like a Jedi, but this power felt so warped. Oh look, this room looks familiar. The Force is with you, young Skywalker. But you are not a Jedi yet. Wow, this game loves playing with your nostalgia. Anyway, you continue on, you meet up with some Bespin guards. Don't shoot! We're on your side! You must be Katarn. Lando sent us to help. Who can help you from here in combat? Nice to have some allies for a change. Getting back to the story, you run into the Imperials and spot Dasan's apprentice, Tavion. You take out some Imperials and get a weapon that's basically like a shotgun. It also fires two explosive balls when you right click. You also get this rapid fire one, and right clicking fires an energy ball. Then you confront Tavion, and she reveals they followed you to the Valley of the Jedi, and now the Imperials are becoming reborn with the Force. She explains that that's why they killed Jan to make Kyle angry, so he would rashly seek out the Valley. All of this makes Kyle very angry. Stop talking! So time for a boss fight. She's a tough dark Jedi to fight. But I'm really surprised I won on my first try. I remember when I was younger dying like 50 times and would get really angry like Kyle. Wait a minute, did you guys see that? Anyway, Kyle starts force choking her when Tavion begs for mercy. The kind of mercy you show Jan? She lives! I can tell you where she is! Liar! I saw her die! She tells you that hauling ship will take Kyle to their secret base where they have Jan prisoner on Gallic's ship, the Doomgiver. Why should I believe you? Because, because I'm not brave enough to die! He lets her live, and so she runs off, while Kyle takes the hauler to the secret base. Lando catches up, but Kyle tells Lando to go find Luke and tell him that the Valley of the Jedi has been invaded. Okay, I don't understand half of it, but okay. May the Force be with you, Kyle. We'll see. Alright, this has all the signs of I need to be stealthy, right? I even tried to stay hidden and listen to these stormtroopers talking. They even started saying this. Just listen. Feels like someone's watching us. You're imagining it. Like always, this isn't a stealth game. You run out, take out the stormtroopers. Now we get to this part that makes no sense and adds so many questions. Kyle, Skywalker, what are you doing here? Seriously, how did Luke get on this base? 
Lando told me where you were going. Th then how were you able to get on this secret base before me? This is a crazy plot contrivance, but uh, okay. Nice to have you around. Luke said he went to the Valley of the Jedi after Kyle left Yavin. He was able to drive Dasan and his forces out, but he's not sure how many Dark Jedi he was able to create. It could be dozens, but it could be thousands. And all of them will have force powers? Yes, but we've got an advantage due to our training and discipline. Look out! I guess the devs really wanted a moment in the game where you fight alongside Luke Skywalker. Don't get me wrong, this is pretty fun, even if Luke got killed the first time. Difficult. And Jedi Master, my ass. I feel there could have been a better spot to have Luke fight alongside you, but I'll take it. Something's changed in you. You seem less angry. Maybe. There's a chance Jan may still be alive on the Doomgiver. Kyle explains to Luke that there's so much more going on. Turns out those crystals from Kedjim were being used to focus the power of the Force from the Valley of the Jedi to Imperial soldiers. The Imperials were using Relo's thugs to smuggle something called Cortosis off Bespin. Luke says that's not good because Cortosis has a rare mineral that resists lightsabers. Great. With all this information, the two decide to split up. Kyle will look for the Doomgiver, and Luke will find out what they're doing with the Cortosis. May the Force be with you, Kyle. Yeah, you too, Luke. Not too much to say about this level, except you can send a bunch of stormtroopers into space. There's this room where you can't touch the floor, so it's pretty hilarious to force pull enemies to the floor. What's also cool is my force pull is able to disarm enemies now. There's also this room that Kyle fights a shadow trooper, which is some kind of dark Jedi with Cortosis armor. That armor seems to resist my lightsaber. I think I can guess how they're using the Cortosis. You continue running through the base until you get here. Ah, there's too many of them. I'll never get through this using firepower. Stealth may be a wiser choice here. Oh my gosh! A stealth section? Kind of. It's more of, don't let enemies touch this or you lose. I did my best remain hidden treating it like a stealth game. So this is the closest you will ever get to stealth. You enter this room and you hear Luke fighting Dasan. Uh, interesting technique Luke. Jumping on the button for the door. Oh no, Luke is dead! <laughs> what the? We're moving! Oh, no, wait, he's fine. Turns out Kyle is on the ship, the Doomgiver, and it's on its way somewhere. Luke tells Kyle that they need to destroy the ship before it reaches its destination. Try to find the ship's communication center and use its sensor array to contact Rogue Squadron. I'll keep trying. <laughs> Luke! Force protection. By this point, most of your force powers are at their strongest. Now I can force push and pull lots of enemies at once. This level has lots of Imperials for you to slaughter. Not much to really say. There is a small section where you control an astromech droid to open a door for you to advance. Eventually you reach the communication center and need to find the right code in this area. Be extra careful when jumping because of this bottomless pit. Now I remember when I was younger I spent hours trying random codes and then running back up to the top to see if I got the correct one. However if you simply check your objectives, the code is right there. So don't make that mistake like I did. Kyle contacts Rogue Leader who tells Kyle that he would like him to destroy the ship's shields to make the job easier. Kyle also finds the prison block on his way. More enemies to fight. In this room, it's pretty hilarious to show how good you are at blocking lasers. You get to the prison and find Jan. Well, you certainly took your sweet time. Hey, it's okay. I'm happy to see you too. She tells Kyle that they interrogated her for information on the Valley of the Jedi for a while. 
But then Dasan wanted to know more about the layout of the Jedi Academy. Oh no. What? I think Dasan's invading the Jedi Academy. We've got to destroy the Doomgiver's shields before he can deploy his troops. I think I know where it is. Let's go. In order to get out of the prison block, Kyle and Jan have to work as a team to open these doors. Seems a little strange for a security measure, but okay. Whoops, closed it too soon. Kyle and Jan split up. Jan is going to get an escape pod ready for them while Kyle goes and takes out the ship's shields. The best part of this level is level 3 force choke. You can now pick up troopers and throw them around or just drop them down a bottomless pit. You eventually get to the shields, but there's one last surprise. Guy Ferrari. <laughs> I'm kidding. Gallic Fire in some kind of suit of armor. But then he. He starts monologuing. Within hours, the sun will have eradicated those annoying Jedi, clearing the way for my ascent as the leader of the new empire. I, Gallic Fire the First, the genius who conceived of the shadow armor, will rule the galaxy with a Cortosis fist. Worlds will tremble. Stars will shudder. Your shields will fall. So another boss fight. At least this one's a little more complex. You need to take down his shields. The best way to do this is to just stand in front of him, and when he stops shooting for a moment, I attack his shields. Once they're down, I attack him directly. However, he will try to backhand the crap out of you. Which if it hits, it will hit you so hard you do a backflip. Once that happens, he pretty much keeps backflipping you until you either get lucky and it misses, or until his shields come back which will push you away. But as you see, sometimes it still hits you even though it looks like it shouldn't, so watch out for that. You don't want to get too far or he will right click. And overall, I did enjoy it. It's something different and it's challenging. Once he's dead, the gravity system on the ship is destroyed, so you float around and have to make your way back to Jan and escape. Come on, this place is falling apart. Couldn't happen to a nicer ship either. Kyle and Jan just barely get away in an escape pod, which ends up in a swamp near the academy. If we get out of this alive, remind me never to do that again. I'm going after Dasan. He's probably heading for the heart of the academy. You coming? I think I'd be more useful in the air. I'll go to the hangar and join the New Republic troops. Okay. Try to avoid anyone with a lightsaber. Good advice, Jedi. This level had a few moments where I got lost. Like here, you have to swim under the water to continue on. I wish it was a little more obvious than just this little waterfall. There's these swamp troopers who blend in with the environment, so they can be hard to find. Also, with lots of deep water, your lightsaber will turn off if it touches the water. This does add a little bit of difficulty since enemies can get a free shot on you. Also, I noticed the rain touching my lightsaber. I'm always a fan of small details like that. Kyle continues on and gets to an area where he can take control of an ATST. <laughs> this is really cool. You feel like an unstoppable force. You can either use your weapons or just step on stormtroopers. A fun level, and I'm happy they put this in. You get into the temple and try finding Dasan. Real quick, there's two more weapons I almost forgot. There's this energy weapon that if you right click creates an energy field that hurts enemies in an area. And finally, the rocket launcher. Obviously fires rockets, and if you right click and hold, you lock onto enemies and it'll follow them. So here you fight alongside some rebels, then join in and assist some Jedi. You might notice Dasan up there. You can choose to help out the Jedi or just run past them and continue following Dasan. The Jedi do follow you once all enemies are defeated. You catch up to Dasan and he finds some secret entrance. He 
You take out the two Shadow Troopers and follow him down. In this final level, you need to get through the temple's traps to catch up to Dasan. Your efforts are in vain. Once you get past all them, you finally catch up to Dasan, who I'm guessing is taking force energy from the temple? I don't know, they don't really explain what he's doing. He just tells Kyle how he will soon be erasing Jedi from history and replace them with a new race of warriors. However, Kyle breaks the news to Dasan that his Jedi are being mopped up and the rest blew up with his ship. What a pathetic ruse. Dasan to Fayar. Admiral? Admiral! Admiral Fire, I order you to come in at once. I was wrong about you, Katan. Your failure as a Jedi hasn't weakened you. It's only made you stronger. It was at this moment I realized the parallel between these two characters. Both are failed Jedi. However, Dasan embraces more of the dark side while Kyle is more on the light. Maybe, maybe not. But I know I won't be alone. How about you, Dasan? Even now, after all this pain, it's not too late. Come, join us. We fool! So here we are, the final boss. There's basically only two ways of fighting him. You can just run in and try your luck at hitting him, however he can just take you out real quick with his lightsaber. And that's assuming he doesn't just use his force lightning or force choke on you. So the best way is to force pull here and here, and it will activate the beam in the middle. This will make you invincible for a few seconds. Once you grab it, try to get as many hits on Dasan as you can. Then I recommend saving and running away until the beam activates again. Repeat until he's dead. Kyle makes his way out, meets up with Jan for one more kiss, then they go speak with Luke. Kyle, Jan, someday you're gonna have to teach me how to do that. Luke assumes Kyle is going to return his lightsaber again. No, I think I'll keep it. Ha! <laughs> I knew it! Lando owes me five credits. Are you sure this is what you want, Kyle? Look, I'm not saying I'm ready to join the Academy or anything like that. I mean... Before I do anything, I figure that Jan and I have earned a long vacation on the beaches of Spira. And after that, well... After that, we'll see. Yeah. Take your time, Kyle. We'll still be here when you're ready. Thanks, and may the Force be with you, Luke. And that's the end of the story. I thought it was pretty good. It did have that one moment with Luke. But it started off good and had a good build up and climactic end with the Jedi Academy getting invaded. Gameplay was straightforward, but as each mission went on, you slowly started to see your power grow. So great gameplay progression. Overall, Jedi Outcast is still a great game. Maybe one day I'll revisit Jedi Academy, but for now, I would recommend checking out both of these games on Steam. I heard they recently came out for the Nintendo Switch. Like I said at the beginning, there is multiplayer, but through the main game you won't find any servers to join because they were all shut down with GameSpy. Wait, what's this? Servers! Oh, and I'm able to join? Okay, I guess there are still servers somehow, but it doesn't look like that many people play Jedi Outcast. You can still play against bots. They have some cool game modes. Hang on, let me play for a few matches. Six and a half hours later. Oh man, that was so much fun. Wow, that brings back so many memories. Okay, let's quickly go over multiplayer and finish up this long video. So they have normal modes like free for all, team deathmatch, and capture the flag. You can set it to sabers only or not, which means everyone will start with a lightsaber and a blaster. It's just like classic arena style, so there's weapons and items scattered around every map to pick up and use. However, there are some unique twists to other game modes. Capture the Asalomari, which takes away force powers from the flag carrier, and enemy players can't use force powers against the flag carrier. There's Holocron Free For All, where you need to pick up force powers scattered on the map, but can only hold a certain number of force powers. When you die, it drops for others to grab. Finally, my personal favorite and the most fun is Jedi Master. Everyone starts off with weapons and no force powers. First one to grab the lightsaber becomes the Jedi Master. It can only use the saber, and has all the force powers to use. You only get points as the Jedi Master. 
I do miss playing this back in the day when it still had lots of people playing. I hope for a remake and it brings a large crowd with it. One last thing to talk about. This game is great to use cheat codes on, specifically spawning in NPCs. Pick any map, and you can spawn in like 10 Jedi and have them fight 10 Dark Jedi, or 25 Luke Skywalkers against 5 Dasans. You could have your own arena tournament. Welcome, welcome to the arena! You came to watch a fight, and a fight you shall have! <laughs> I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I had a lot of fun with this video since I'm a huge Star Wars fan. Please like and share, comment on what you liked, and any feedback on where I can improve in my editing. My goal right now is to stream once a week and release at least one high quality video per month. It's the best I can do with my current schedule. Maybe one day I can YouTube full time, but that's a long way from now. I have some ideas for other kinds of videos and I look forward to experiment. So for now, the next video will be on one of these games. Take a guess in the comments. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video. Ahoo!